All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for dropping by. We're, we're back at it again with the vintage colors and inks. And uh, yeah, um, we're going to jump in and talk a little bit about inking. And again, I'll just uh, demo a few of the things in the Quick Hit Vintage uh, that I used uh, to quickly uh, get this piece together. Um, d it relatively didn't take that long, actually. Um, I did the colors really, really fast and rough. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you how that worked uh, near the end of the video. But uh, this was the end result. And basically, uh, this is my color map. Uh, being interpreted by a filter from Affinity Photo that is actually active here inside Affinity Designer. Um, yeah, and uh, but that's not really what I wanted to talk about in this video. Uh, what I wanted to talk about in this video were, were my inks or or is my inks. So um, similarly to how I did it in the Mad Ball Madness video, I think I'm going to jump around uh, in time using my snapshots. Uh, you can see that um, as I can't rename my snapshots in uh, the iPad version, which I wish I could, developers, please, if you hear me, please. Uh, <laughs> but you can actually see a, a pretty solid uh, timeline progression. Um, so starting on Saturday, I, I, I started this little project. I started inking it up. And um, it took me, um, you know, I worked on it like a couple hours here, a couple hours there. Um, it took me quite a few hours, I think, uh, maybe roughly like, I don't know, in little chunks about, I can't see the time stamps clearly, but I would estimate this. I would put it at about five hours just for the inking. Uh, that's because I was being very meticulous about it. Um, so yeah, I want to jump back in time and tell you a little bit about some of the things I noticed and uh, some of the little tricks that you might want to use the next time you're trying to ink something that is pretty complicated. Um, and this uh, these Kirby this Kirby machinery is as complicated as they come. I, I didn't do a great job on the colors. I know uh, I could have probably gone a lot crazier with it. Like I am imagining that like if this was in I've never seen this. I've never seen this particular panel in real life. I don't even know if this was just a pencil drawing or a panel. Uh, I searched for Jack Kirby pencil drawing. This came up. I love Dr. Doom. I love this drawing. It's just so cool. I want to I want to know what this machine does. You know, it just it really attacks your imagination. Um, I want to know more about the castle, you know, like all of it. It just it gets you. But um, yeah, like. I've never seen the actual real panel of this, if it exists in a comic book. Somebody out there with some serious knowledge might drop it on me, like where I can actually, what issue, what year, you know, uh, what title I can find this panel in. I would love to see how they treated it in the original. I'm assuming there are lots of different colors. Like, you know, the Kirby comics, a lot of times they tend to be hyper colorful, lots of magenta and orange and cyan and like, all juxtaposed and uh, sort of uh, clashing, but working together to sort of guide your eyes towards different parts of the composition. Anyway, yeah, um, I, I, I did it quick and dirty with the colors. But uh, yeah, like I said, let's jump back in time with my snapshots to the very beginning. And I'll tell you a little bit about what I was thinking. And I'll show you a couple of cool things that you, you might uh, use uh, if you decide that you want to go and ink something that yourself and um, some of you guys who are just getting started with affinity. Uh, yeah, this one's for you. Um, and I, I, all, some of this stuff is also, you know, there, it's my, my thoughts on the situation in general, uh, as far as like what, what's going on in affinity, the pros and cons, where we're at with it, like where it's at right now as a version 1.10.3 and uh, yeah, all that. Um, before we actually go any further, I'm realizing that my, my Apple Pencil nib is um, a little bit uh, worn out. I'm going to switch it out, actually. Um, one thing I would say is, uh, you know, now that I'm backed up to the beginning here, what I realized, um, well, it's not what I realized just 
yesterday or Saturday or Sunday when I was inking this guy. Um, what I've been thinking about a lot lately is uh, the tools and materials. Where the Apple Pencil is concerned, I'll, I'll throw a project, I'll throw a picture of it up on the screen. But I've been using these nibs that are supposedly, um, they're, 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 you know, supposed to be um, rep replicating the, the feel of a soft 2B pencil. Um, and so when you buy these tips, they're like not, they're like off brand tips. I don't even know. They're probably made in China somewhere. Um, I don't know. There's not even a brand name on the box. I can't remember what, I, I didn't, I know you can find them on Amazon, but I didn't order them from Amazon because I'm not based in the U.S., but uh, they're really awesome. I, I love the the soft ones. I'm, I'm, I wish I could just buy a whole bag of them. They're so great. They don't last terribly long. They get they get worn out, but that soft rubbery tip um, really feels much better than a hard brittle tip to ink with, especially since I'm using a uh, a matte drawing film on top of my iPad Pro. Uh, another thing that I used while I was uh, doing this a lot is a plastic ruler across the top of my uh, Sketchboard Pro. Um, well, we can sh I can talk a little bit about it right now. Like, as you can see, so basically what I did was when I started, you know, I went and I searched, of course, this, I found this picture on the same day that I found the picture of, of old Balder there, but I searched Jack Kirby pencils on the internet. Um, I brought them into Affinity Designer, set the layer mode to darken to get rid of the white paper. And uh, yeah, I just uh, sort of lowered the opacity a bit and got to work, right? Um, but, you know, there's, in this, in this picture, there are a lot of right angles, um, a lot of straight, hard angles and hard lines that are like mechanical objects. They're not so easy to draw with the steady, with you know, just with the steadiness of your hand. Uh, you need to use a ruler uh, or some sort of system that can actually straighten the line. Now, this is, I guess, this will be like uh, note one on the video. I, I'm hoping that at some point, perhaps Affinity will implement some sort of, uh, uh, you know, drag and hold system comparable to what's in procreate it could be useful if not perhaps a ruler system sort of like what's going on in apple notes at the moment which is really awesome i actually draw in apple notes quite a bit because of its the expediency of it um but yeah like so right now the methods are either a do it with a vector tool or b when you draw a line um you will need to, let's see, I'll grab, I'll go into Pixel Persona, grab my inker, and uh, grab some black ink. Cool. And so if you hold shift, right, you can draw perfectly straight lines, but the limitation is you can only do this exactly horizontally and exactly vertically. There are no, it's not diagonal capable. It is, but it isn't. I'll show you. Um, if I hold shift and draw a line like this, I can draw a point to another angle. And if I'm still holding shift, watch what happens. It will actually complete the angle for me. But you see here, you've got to have the right kind of brush. If you've got a brush with pressure enabled, it's not going to work out. It's going to look wonky and uh, you're not gonna get a good line. Let's uh, use this liner here. It works. Doesn't matter what the angle is, it works. But the problem is it's tricky to draw this way. Yeah. Um, the, so uh, like I'll try this I'll I'll try I'll I'll come around here start here start to hold shift and then I'll get this line it's not bad right you can get a you can often get a better result by uh you know implementing a stabilization I'll start here but see I start to get wobbly there so the trick is it's like I'll come around the corner hold shift and do it 
you can't see me holding shift, but I've got my uh, wireless Apple keyboard, like sort of, uh, you know, um, hooked to the, to the top of my uh, Sketchboard Pro and it's up, it's really comfortable where it is. But yeah, so I got a nice result this way. So you, you put your stabilizer on, whichever stabilizer you think will be, will help you get around the corner faster, right? And uh, you start the line, you get it going. And then once you get to the apex, you, you hold shift and, and you can get some excellent results this way. They're, it's not exact, but it is hand drawn. And you can always try to do it again, try to get it a little better. It actually works pretty well. Um, and I know that I'm mentioning this because I, it's not it's not like some super magical revelation, or it may be. I, I just thought some of you guys that are just getting started uh, and are frustrated with the this uh, kind of this situation in Affinity Designer, you might I thought you might want to know about how that how it works and uh, how to really get the most out of it. Because I think a lot of people, if you're anything like me. You know, when I was first getting started, I was expecting it to work a lot like it works in Procreate. Oops, sorry. But it doesn't work that way. Um, I wish I could just, sometimes I wish I could drag it out and just hold it like this and make it snap to straight. But I know that's uh, a bit of, look, I, I don't know that much about uh, being a developer or a programmer or uh, a coding or anything like that. But I'm I'm assuming that once you go down a certain path, uh, backtracking code wise is probably just a nightmare. And so, you know, I trust the the guys over there that they went down this particular path for the benefits that it uh, brings you, which in my opinion are pretty, pretty great. I mean, you, we have everything we need to, to get for precision. So don't, don't get discouraged if it's just it's just a matter of it's just a matter of getting used to it uh i think like i just did that freehand with the shift key on my bluetooth keyboard but i'm on my ipad um i don't even think i could do that as easily with especially with that with the corner stabilization i don't know i don't know that you could do it so well in procreate uh or so comfortably at least i know that it's super comfortable for me now working in affinity designer so remember that uh if you've got a bluetooth keyboard hook it up grab your shift key turn on your stabilizer start playing around tracing uh tracing some uh you know highly geometric objects release at the there start again hold the shift key it works out pretty well so a lot of this a lot of these uh machine like a lot of these uh, machine edges you know like here i was definitely using my stabilization a lot and i was Definitely using my shift key quite a bit to get some of these edges. So that's, uh, I guess, tip number one or sort of talk, talking point number one. Um, as far as process goes, uh, when I started out, you know, um, so I'm using this, uh, this bra. Shh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm just trying to have a little bit of fun with it and not be too serious. I don't want to take myself too seriously. So that's why I give silly names to all the brushes. Cause I don't want that. I don't want to be like taking myself too seriously. This is all just stuff I'm doing for fun, you know? Um, but I love this brush and, uh, it definitely made me stop and say, bro, this brush is amazing. When I started drawing with it. Um, it's a little, uh, image nib that I whipped up and, uh, if we zoom in, uh, I really like the the quality on the line. It's like, it's smooth, but rough at the same time. Uh, if I take my stabilization off, I've got the jitter set in such a way that it just gives me these little imperfections along the, the outside edges. And uh, it looks 
so natural, especially when I start to look at it through the paper texture. Um, there is a, so this paper, these pepper textures come with the, um, the quick kit vintage as they are now. And, uh, basically it's a, it's a textured paper with a, with a, with a highlight layer, the same texture, but it's just, uh, inverted and highlighted over the top of it. And, uh, you know, this is a pretty popular trick that's been, uh, done for a long time now by a lot of different people. Um, but. I like the I like it, you know, and I, I when I started to learn it, now I've got it, you know, I, I understand how it works and uh the 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 little imperfections in the ink lines that come out, it, it really feels like it's in the paper. And and I really I like that so much. Um so yeah, I used basically my brush inker, the liner version of it, this chisel tip marker. Oops, sorry. Uh, by the guys, uh, for you new noobs out there, you, you you guys who are just coming in and you're like you're, you're you're getting frustrated with little things. This little guy right here, this pin, it'll keep the brush drawer open so that when you it doesn't do this every time when you want to switch, you can hold the pen down, you can pin it up, and it'll just stay open so you can rifle through your brushes uh, without that happening. But yeah, uh, for the most part, uh, inking this, I used this brush inker, this liner, this marker. Uh, this one just draws really fat lines without, uh, there. there's no weight uh, variation, right? There's no uh, pressure uh, or size variance. And um, yeah, that's it. I didn't really use my chisel tip on this one either. I was really going for a, uh, uh, like, I, I wanted a really clean look. Um, and, and, you know, for, I use this chisel tip one when I'm trying to get that really fast, rough, really natural look like, um, oops, sorry. Like when I want to get really nasty kind of shapes into the, into the work, that's not what this piece called for. Um, so I didn't, I didn't bring that into the equation much. So yeah, um, project wise, I just went in here and I got started with, um, you know, I knew that I was going to use a lot of these uh, cursive or and, and tapered strokes uh, to get this cape situation under control. And uh, I really carefully went in with my liners and, uh, you know, worked out the mask. And, you know, I, I know I've heard from several different people like, oh, you know, working on the face in the beginning is so important to me. Like, Sometimes I, I really agree with that. Like I wanted to see Doom's eyes, you know, like psyched out and uh, kind of psychopathically concentrating on this maniacal device that he's created. Um, you know, I can just, I can almost, when I look at the drawing, you know, I can almost hear like his, you know, uh, like tortured anger and, and, and hatred for Reed Richards, like, you know, cacophonously bouncing through his mind as he's like, you know, twisting the levers and, and tweaking the knobs and, and, and monitoring the electric currents and what have you. It's just like, Oh man, I, I love this drawing so much. Um, so, uh, when I first started, I was just like, I didn't even hesitate. I just like, Oh, when I, when I got the drawing in, I just went in and started getting that face finished because I, I needed to see it, I guess, to bring everything to life for me. Um, but yeah, um, so let's, uh, move on a little bit and I'll talk about some other things that cropped up. Um, once I, once I, once I have to sort of take a look at every little snapshot to see where we were. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like down here, um, this, this guy right here, uh, this hard mechanical edges, well, I used, this chisel tip marker, but then I used the technique that I showed you earlier. I'll, I'll sort of duplicate it off to the side here, um, on another pixel layer. Like I, I got my rope stabilizer at the default setting, which is really perfect. I think, um, pulled this out, stop. And then it, if you hold it right before you go up, you can do things like this. 
I didn't do it very gracefully there. You have to change direction before you actually press it. So it's like, pull it out, change direction, then go up. And a lot of times you don't even need to do it like that. You can also do it like this. Watch this. I'll, I'll come up with the rope stabilizer. I'll, I'll start a new stroke, right? But before I do, I'll hold the shift key down. Now, a lot of times you get anomalies like this um, at the end of your line, you know, um, especially just because what's happening with this brush is it's a chisel shape, right? It's a chisel shape and um, it's meant to be that way to sort of emulate like the chisel tip of a marker. Uh, lots of different, you know, chisel markers out there. You guys have seen them before. Um, and uh, I've got my rotation settings set for direction. And I've done that on purpose for this brush so that I can um, use it to create like bold outlines. That's the purpose of this marker. Um, you could set it to something like um, angle, right? And that's when you can get like these uh, sort of, uh, this almost looks like some form of Arabic writing, right? Um, you can get these sort of, um, based on the angle of your brush, that's also useful. But for the most part, for this piece in particular, I used it for, uh, in direction mode so that I could get these nice bold outlines. When you want to clean things up, there's lots of ways to go about it. Um, double tap my eraser here. I've got this bad boy as an eraser, this, uh, repurposed, uh, inker. I'm not applying any pressure here and I'm going in and literally zero pressure. The minute I start to apply pressure and it really, I can really just get rid of everything like, right? But say you've got a situation that is really delicate like this and you, you really want to get a per perfection. Um, that's just, maybe it's like, oops, sorry. Let's just give it a little more. Something weird happened here say something like this goes on, your pixel tool is just excellent for this kind of stuff. Now, I've got tap settings set up uh, in this project uh, for all of the major tools which I use. Um, for example, if I use the br paintbrush tool, my double tap takes me to my eraser and vice versa, right? I've used the fill tool quite a bit on this project my double tap on the fill tool brings me back to my previous, my last previously used tool, which was my paintbrush tool. And usually inking um, a piece like this, the last tool that I would have been using would have been my either paintbrush or eraser. So I'm only another tap away from whatever I need to use. Um, with the pixel brush, with the pixel tool, it's a very specific use tool, right? Uh, a double tap will activate alternate mode down here. A double tap will activate and deactivate that. You can all you can set all this up in your um, settings, and I'll show you that in just a second. But um, yeah, when when you come in here, you can get in really tight with your um, pixel tool, and really just eliminate little funky anomalies like this without any kind of problem. You know, like I overshot the mark. No problem. Just shave it off like a like like a like a Tetris board. Just shave it off. And there you go. You can handle all kinds of little problems like this. And and you know, the thing that I would advise for you is this. Remember this. Right now, um we're looking at a lot of pixels. Um but actually, if we look at the view mode, the main view mode is vector view mode. If you put this thing into pixel view mode, you start to see uh, how this thing will look rasterized. And what you realize is when you zoom out, uh, a lot of times those little tiny imperfections like that are, are for, for all intents and purposes, nearly invisible. Uh, so... I'll talk a little bit about uh, proofreading and stuff at the end of this because I'm the worst at it, but I'm starting to develop methods that will help me get better at it. I'll talk a little bit about that near the end of the video. Um, but 
I would, it, the, the pixel tool is there for you. If there's like something glaringly, obviously, you know, out of place, like this little guy right here. Um, in fact, I'm on another layer, but I'll go here and get rid of that guy. That didn't need to go so far. Yeah. Like maybe I needed this line for whatever reason. And that little stroke from the cape was sort of intruding on my um, situation there. Just got rid of it using the uh, pixel tool and alternate mode on the pixel tool. So, and I've got it set up with the double tap. Usually a four pixel width, it's all you really need. Um, you can change the brush on this thing, but I don't use that function at all. Um, I uh, want to keep it nice and tiny. And uh, it's it's all about that micro editing. Like this little guy right here, I don't like this edge. There we go. No problem. Fixed. You know, you could go on and on. It, but anything you need to take care of at the micro level, use your uh, pixel tool. It's real quick. It gets the job done. Let's uh let's keep let's keep moving through the, the snapshots. Uh, I'll see if I can find anything that really. Oh, the the. The circles on good old um, Dooms, his, you know, the, the, the clasps holding his uh, cape in place. Um, yeah, that's a uh, good old vector ellipse tool. Yeah. And what I did was uh, I didn't want the stroke to be to look so perfect. So if you take a look at it, I just what I did was I converted it to curves. Once I got it in place, yeah, I actually, I wanted to circumvent the perfection of the vector object. So I sort of, you know, warped it a little bit or, or, or made it rather oblong rather than just a perfect circle. And, um, you know, um, I would say that when you're using vector objects in your projects like this, just tr try to look at them like take a step back and look at it. And it's like, if you're using like a perfect circle or something, just ask yourself, like, does it look right? I, Kirby didn't draw a perfect circle there, but you know, don't get complacent and just throw a circle out there and be like, Oh yeah, it's good. I got it. Uh, and also if you, if you want the edges to look a little bit more natural, um, I came in here with, um, one of these, uh, I can't remember which one it was. It wasn't an ink brush it, or was it? Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure if it was an ink brush or a dry media brush. At any rate, um, this one has a sort of that tattered edge, right? Um, the problem with these is often that they don't complete, right? They don't, they're not seamless. So I just come in here, break it. And then like with the pen tool or the node tool, like extend the, extend the line. You can do that in any number of ways, like for the pen tool, for example, here. Oops, sorry, let's break it one more time. Yeah, like this, like maybe extend it out with the pen tool a little bit. Grab these up. There you go. And you can complete it. Yeah. Um, there were several places where I did use um, I did use the ellipse tool in this in this particular project, and uh, I used the rectangular tool or, or yeah the rectangle tool in a couple of different situations. Let's see, let's 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 start peeling back uh, the layers in of time until present. Okay. Oh, it looks like I took care of all this stuff over here. I did most of this by hand, actually. I didn't use any. You can see the imperfections in the line, but I was happy with it. I wanted it to look hand drawn. I didn't, I'm really nervous when I'm using vector tools these days, especially if I'm working on something like, I want to get a really natural looking result. I don't want it to look like completely vector. Vector stuff has uh, the, it runs the risk of looking too mechanical um, and, 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 the humanity is, seems drained out of it at times. So I, I've i been trying to find ways to sort of mitigate that. And um, yeah, I did this all by hand with uh, my inkers. Let's see. 
moving forward. Oh, you can, you can, it's, it's blatant right here, isn't it? Um, I used the donut tool to create that tube like this. <coughs> mm. Yeah, pretty, pretty simple stuff. Just lined it up with the drawing, got the tube to the right shape. And that was about it. Yeah. Um, got the, uh, the 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 stroke width where I needed it to be, and uh, rasterize it, and that was it. So, donut tool for the old tuberuski. Uh, let's talk about some of the fill stuff. Um, with the fill stuff, I, I've shown this in other videos, but it, it, it bears repeating, um, especially because they become so prominent in this little area here. Let's uh, like let's see what happens in the next snapshot. making progress yeah let's uh let's back up and uh let's try to tackle this little area here just a little piece of it so you can see how to handle spot blacks it's pretty simple stuff um put another pixel layer down not that it really matters i guess since we're actually i won't because we've got snapshots we, we can do whatever we want um i'll go back to the inker let's see am i still on my chisel yes all right, so I'm in here. We'll bust out this shape. Let's see. Went a little crazy there, but that's all right. Yeah, clean that up with the eraser tool just a little bit. Get an edge on it. Cool. And then uh, maybe put one more down. Actually, I'll uh, go back to my brush tool. Lay down uh, like a, a, a slightly thinner line, like say nine pixels. Go up. Let's put our window stabilizer on. And what I'll try to do is I'll try to hit this angle at the end and see if I can't get a nice one stroke, uh, one stroke kill. What, what, Ooh, that's tough. That that angle is like really tough. I got to slow down a little bit. But if I slow down, um, I can't get that nice thing. So what I think I'm going to try is hmm. yeah. It's tough. It's tough. I can't remember how I went about doing that. Yeah, I just had to slow it down. That was it, really. You can't hold, you could do like this, like check it out. Like this is one way to go about it. So you start the line, then you hold shift and you tap. But you see there, somehow the pressure always sort of gets involved in the situation. And that's not, It's uh, it's it can be slightly annoying. I've got pressure on this brush, but if I do it with, let's say I'll do it with, I could do it with a basic round. Or I could do it with this guy right here. That's a good that's a good width. Let's do it with this guy. So start the line, hold shift, bring it over, complete the line. Yeah. Looks like we've got ourselves a little uh, situation there. What is this? Okay, the, the machine goes off like that. So. You can see you can you can see the places where Kirby it seems he used a ruler, right? So, but the reason that we're here is we're actually um, concerned with spot blacks. Basically, what I'm doing right now is just uh, creating a uh, sort of a corral for my. Uh, Oh, this is where the window stabilizer really shines. I love I love lines like this because they're so fun to draw. Ooh, I almost nailed it. Let's try it one more time. Perfect. 
and then we need one more uh, we need one more like this now the jitter on this brush is dirty right like you, you've noticed all these little jitters that's basically the nib like kind of jittering um, to and and that's what um, I, I could get rid of it in this brush but I, I kind of leave it um, to to allow the imperfections to to sort of um, color the the result uh, even if it's in a, in a way that's I'm not even sure it's perceptible um, but I I don't know it's there knowing it's there is is it feels good to me so I, I leave it you get better you learn things uh, you change uh, maybe one day I'll, 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 I'll know better okay I think we can um, I think we can uh, just uh, just kind of phone it in on this one because we're just trying to show spot blacks we weren't so what I'm doing is I'm just touching the the, the edges right actually I'll just draw that out there we go switch over to the eraser get rid of the garbage take out the garbage pull this in cool yada 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 doom is lord of all okay good good and then we've got our little flood fill tool situation check it out oops Oh, sorry, there's no color in the fill bucket. So when you're working with the fill tool, you've got to have this enabled with the color you want because this is the fill color. This is the stroke color. You've got to have the fill color set like this. You get these little anomalies, little spaces in between. Just set the tolerance higher. I usually set the tolerance because I have confidence now to 95 gives me a super solid fill in with no expansion. If you go to 100%, it's gonna expand it um, beyond, it's gonna flood into the lines that already exist and sometimes that creates a big fat mess. You don't want that. But I feel like if you're looking for super tight fill, 95 is good, um, it's, it's, uh, it's good. Occasionally you might not want that, you might set it a little bit lower, but uh, yeah, uh, 95 for your spot blacks um, in, the, in the fill tool. And um, I'm just inking on this layer, knowing that you're inking, knowing that you've been taking snapshots as you, you should. Um, if you make a mistake, you never have to worry because you're, um, you're never more than a few undo taps or a snapshot reversal uh, away from getting back to where you need to be as far as um, making, your, making sure your project's done well. Let's keep moving. We got that bad boy done. Whoa, we I really did a lot there, didn't I? Let's back up. Man, I went on a rampage, I suppose. Um, and I see I took this one at 203 and this one at an hour later, at almost an hour later, like 259. So I guess I just got in the zone. Um, I will talk about how I got those tubes um done. Uh so I'll just say it verbally. You can see here I I, I went in with the with the ellipse tool, um, both um, both here, right, and here we've got ellipse tool action going on. Now you see here I actually inked the chains that Kirby drew. I'll talk about it in a minute, but I, I don't like the way they look. Um, and I end up changing these and I use uh, the uh, rectangle tool to mark those out as well. But for this tube here, uh, what I did was I used a, I used the uh, pencil tool in Vector Persona. Uh, or I'm sorry, the paintbrush tool. The vector brush tool with a basic brush. Where are you? 
or did it? No, 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 no. I used the pencil tool for this one because you don't have to set a brush on it. So I used the pencil tool, um, set the stroke color to black. And actually, I'm going to back up in my snapshot so you can see it. You, you can set it to whatever you want. Uh, made sure my window stabilizer was on and in full effect. Set it to about, you know, I don't know, 25 is the standard. I would say like, let's just go with 25 and see what happens. I can't remember what I had the setting set at. But uh, yeah, you uh, come out here. Yeah. Once I sort of got like a, 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 a stroke width um, close to what I was looking for, I just did it again and again until I found the right groove, you know? That's not bad. We're zoomed out pretty well, uh, right? Because it's 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 this line covers a, a great deal of the picture, so we don't get that many nodes, which is really uh, it was really it's really nice. Um, you get a couple that you don't need, but not too many. Yeah. Once you've got the curve looking the way you want it, we'll see. We'll call that smooth. Yeah. challenging to match Kirby's line exactly right just from just from the stroke so what you do is once you get it right you'll end up increasing the width a little bit to sort of get the right width of the tube and then expand the stroke and I don't know why I think it's because of the template file that I use I've got to go back into the templates all the tools are activated uh, it's been happening a lot lately I don't particularly like that I've, I've Got to see about changing it, but come in and um, expand the stroke and then switch by just a quick drag like this. Yeah. And then find the right width of the line. And then you can go in and edit with the node tool, whatever you need to do to get it looking right. Yeah. You don't even have to keep it closed and connected anymore because we're not going to fill it with anything. This, these, we're just after the the lines. So, for example, I come in here, break these, get rid of the leftovers, and continue to edit. And there you go. That was uh, that was that. Let's see, what else did we do? I guess I'm just, at this point, I think I'm just filling out details. What's missing from this one? So we're here. A couple hours later. I don't think I worked on this from 3 o'clock until this time. I think it was a couple of hours in between. Watch some um, Netflix with, with my wife and uh, had some dinner. Came back, hit it a little bit more. Yeah, just filling in details here. Little things. Put 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 it inside of a border. Again, the chains are still here. When do I decide to change them out? I think I'm still, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm fleshing all this stuff out over here. Details on our little soldier guy back in the corner, a little doom bot. I'm finding all this. All, I'm doing all the the details on the tubes and stuff. Um, I did these with uh, just a like like a um, an ink. Oh, you can see what I've got going on. Okay, so I do start working on the chains on this episode or this snapshot. You can see I'm cleaning up the chains. I'm using um, grouped rectangles. Nothing uh, particularly fancy, but they're there. I've got, I'm masking out the parts. I, you know, I'm using the eraser mask technique, right? So it's like if there's something that you don't want in this example, right? 
you just go back into pixel persona, grab your eraser. And as long as they're, you know, this will work on a group, this will work on a, on a single curve. Um, it will work on a layer, but you just start erasing. And if it's a vector object, it'll start laying down a mask for you. And you don't have to worry anymore. And you can get in and get what you need revealed or hidden, etc. Yeah. I'm going in here with my, um, a lot of this stuff wasn't in the previous versions of the uh, thing. I'm just going in here with my, uh, oops, just going in here with my inker. You know, I usually turn my stabilizers off for this kind of stuff. Getting that kind of stuff filled in. And then here with these long lines of detail on the, this stuff, occasionally I will use my stabilizer, uh, like the window stabilizer. But um, a lot of times I try to keep it natural. I think I can get, I can get more expression when I'm doing it freehand, you know? Um, here's something I'll talk about. Say you want to get one of these strokes like this, right? But it's really hard because you go over the line or you'll, you know, you, you, you go into little areas that you don't want to be in. Well, um, what you can do is you can use the a flood selection tool. It looks like a, a, a magic wand. You, uh, it's, it works brilliantly with, um, enclosed little areas of inks. You just go in, tap the area and it will select everything for you. You can you can turn up the tolerance, right? I realized this after the fact. I didn't do this in real time, but you can turn up the tolerance to actually encroach further into the 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 ink. So like what I'll do is I'll, I'll back up, deselect a little bit. I'll increase the tolerance to like 50. We're not there yet. Let's try 90. That's pretty tight. You see, I'm right there on the edge of that black. Let's do it one more time at 95. Yeah, that's about as tight as it's getting, I think. Um, but you can increase the tolerance of the flood selection tool just like you can of the paint bucket tool or the fill tool, and it works very similarly. And then if you've got some lines like this where you wanna go uh, you know, into the edge without uh, going over the line, it, it works brilliantly. So you can just get expressive, you know? without worrying about going off the page. And you can start off the page too, which is really useful. So you can start like down here, get get it where you need it to be. Or especially you can go in with the um, flood selection tool. Like say you want a line that looks like it's going behind something. So I'll just change this to add, add this selection to my selection go back to my paint bucket tool, or I'm sorry, my paintbrush tool, and then, oops, sorry, that's an eraser. Something like that. Maybe I want to, like a big bold stroke right through it. Using some white out there, are we, uh, Mr. Kirby? Or Mr. Joe Sinnott? Um, I really don't know what I was, I wanted a nice, big, bold, smooth inks like Senate would do on this, but, you know, I am not under the, you know, illusion that my stuff is anywhere even comparable to Joe Sinnott's. I'm just, um, I, I definitely, um, I've been looking at a lot of Senate lately. You get a lot of stuff like this when you use that flood selection fill method. You get a lot of these little areas because it won't go all the way to the edge. So you just got to come in, proofread a little bit, get rid of those areas. And I think I do that by the end of this project. I go back through, which I guess I should just go ahead and take you on because I don't think I've got many more little tips for you guys. Um, let's, uh, let's go back to this. All right, so this is the the last step that I took before I started um, actually 
coloring in like my little uh, sort of color map, I guess, of my color sketch. Um, so if you're like me, it's like, I don't really know where to start with proofreading sometimes. And a lot of times I'm doing these videos, I'm in a real big hurry because I want to, I don't have much time to make the videos. So I'm trying to do this before I run out the door to go to work. I'm just like early in the morning. I get up real early, I have my, uh, my coffee and get to it while everybody's sleeping. And um, yeah, I, I'm trying to work on methods of proofreading. So I came up with this idea that you could use, you might use it yourself to do some proofreading. And um, basically it's like this. Um, I'll switch back over to Vector Persona. This is just an idea. It's not, I'm not saying this is the best way to get things done. It's just an idea. Um, if you've got a keyboard um, hooked up, you can do command comma, and then you can see your grid. Now, grid uh, grid mode, you can set it to auto or you can set it to standard. Um, I'm, I know that my canvas width is based on, um, you know, the iPad size, 2732 um, by 2048. I It's double that size though. It's uh, 5464 by 4096. All of these numbers are divisible uh, by, um, you know, multiples of eight. Yeah, 64. Um, uh, wait, is it multiples of eight? I'm, I'm terrible at math. I, I know all the numbers though, right? If I go to 512, um, and then, um, let's just bring this down to something like, um, let's see, 1024. Yes. We're getting there. 256. Okay, cool. 256. Yeah. Then 512. Cool. And then what's, uh, so what is it? 128. Something like that. Let's go 512. 256 is the maximum. That's it's really all we need. What do we what what you want to do is uh, you know get the grid expanded pretty large uh, so it's not bothering you while you're trying to work. And what I would do is like this is just an idea I had the other day. I'm gonna start trying it and I'll let you know how it works out, but I want to share it with you while we're here. Just get myself a bright color like this. And uh, I'll set it to multiply or darken. And I'll just go through and uh, look at everything within this grid. Just I'll concentrate on this area alone, right? And I'm coloring it pink sort of to help me. You can color it whatever color you want, right? Like maybe cyan is better on your eyes. I don't know. Yellow. Whatever helps you focus. But, um, so yeah, I'm just looking for errors, looking for mistakes, things that I can correct and clean up. Once I'm confident that, uh, everything looks solid the way that I would like it to look, I can leave this in place, grab my move tool, two finger tap and hold, and then create a new area. And then maybe I can color this one a little bit differently to let me know that it's good. I'll color it green for good. Yeah. And then just continue like this. This way, my theory is that it will help me ensure that I've checked the entire piece for errors. I'm really bad about it. I'm trying to get better about it. This is my method. What do you guys think? You like it? Yes? No? Maybe? Hit me up in the comments. Let me know. Like right here, I found one, you know, seek and ye shall find. It's all right. I got tools, baby. I got tools. Where are we? Get to the right layer, Rob. Oops. What is going on? Hold on one second here. Oh, it's because it's inside the rectangle. There we go. There we go. Yeah, so this is just one way you might approach proofreading. A little funky stuff going on here. But again, if you're trying to do something vintage like this, I wouldn't get too carried away. If something is just 
blatantly just wrong, that's when maybe you want to um, sort of take a step, you know, and, and, and fix it. But uh, if you get all zoomed in here like this and you start looking at stuff like this and things like, you know, this, you're going to drive yourself crazy. And remember, um, I think that's part of what adds to the charm of all this stuff. Little imperfections that are almost imperceptible, but they add like a sense of, they add a sense of naturalism and uh, humanity to it that I, I kind of dig. So yeah, that's just uh, an idea about uh, proofreading things like that. And then, you know, basically once your whole piece is covered in green and you feel, you can feel good at least that you tried to go over the entire thing and, and look for mistakes. So uh, yeah. Guys, um, I've been here. It's all, we're, we're almost at an hour. I think I'm going to close it out. Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about inking in um, Pixel Persona and, and all that comes with that. Um, yeah, um, I got... The, I, so you can see here, today's Tuesday morning. Um, yeah, we... Uh, our, our school is closed down for a couple of days. Um, enjoying uh, some much needed time off so um came back here i got myself oh yeah by the way to show the grid with your keyboard commands it's command comma just like on the desktop and then uh if you want to show your guides it's command uh semicolon uh, so yeah i just turn all those off um if they're in the menu here grids and guides grids guides there um, yeah, if you want to show them with the keyboard, command, comma, super useful. I'll show you my, 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 this will be my little, um, what do you, what, this was sort of the end result, but it's not a finished piece. It's just, this is a really quick color mapping that I did with my, with the colors in the YRB 64 color palette. I used these colors to try to stay true to the, to the era. Yeah. I know. I realized I could have gone a lot crazier on the machinery and stuff. But again, this is just super quick scribbling it out there. Um, just trying to figure out where I wanted to go with it. And then, um, yeah, dropped in one of the halftone filters from Affinity Photo. And uh, it uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, there's, you know, it's give me a good idea about the, the way it will look in the final uh, once I get everything where I want it to be and uh, use the brushes on it. Um, so yeah, it's good. It's a good to, it's a good way to mock it up. Um, it's a lot of fun. And then I went out on the top, um, with these, basically what I've got are these little screens uh, that you drop in and it's got all these, uh, sort of damage and splatters and nicks and dings on them. And, uh, in fact, they're called dust dings and scratches. And then what they've got is just like the, um, I'll just erase that one. Just like the uh, the the YRB screens, they are they've got masks attached to them. So what I usually do is I take a look at places where I really like them. Occasionally, I'll even go in with a marker like this, and I'll be like, oh, um, like I'll I'll try to find the ones that have all this character. Like I like these guys over here. Oops, let me uh, let me make that a little bolder. I like these guys over here. Um, in fact, actually, I'm gonna, yeah, there we, go. there we go. I like these guys. I like what I'm seeing here. Like, you know, some of the stuff, uh, I like these guys over here. Some of the stuff over here is pretty wild. I, I like it. Just trying to add a little character. Like it's really ripped out of an old comic book, you know? And then once I activate the mask, I can just go into the mask in the areas which I have circled. So I'll go in with white. Oops. Yeah. And just, uh, yeah, start revealing 
the stuff that uh, gave me a little bit of uh, character. And, uh, you know, feels like I've ripped something out of an old comic book. Um, I will try to sit down at some point and really do a, a, a solid job on these colors. But uh, yeah, you get the general idea. Guys, I think we're exactly at an hour. I am going to take a rest. And uh, I hope uh, some of the tips for the inking and uh, Pixel Persona were helpful. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching this little... Uh, uh, session. Uh, guys, keep working hard. Take care of yourself. Uh, stay positive, And uh, we'll see you next time, okay? Cheers. <laughs>